So it's December 24th and it's been that long since I made a video. It almost feels like the first time again. I'm, I'm even nervous about it. <laughs> I've been on the missing list for a bit here. Uh, been fairly busy in the shop. Uh, not a lot of projects actually to, to record for YouTube. So I got a bit of a cheat sheet down here. I'd like to thank everybody for the uh, many messages I'm after getting lately, wondering uh, if I'm alive and well. Uh, uh, I am alive. <laughs> been, uh, like I said, been really busy uh, trying to keep a shop going when you're the only guy in the place. Uh, management expects a lot of work from the staff and, uh, you know, so you got to put your time in. I've been doing a lot of industrial work lately. Uh, what I've got in this is uh, mainly pictures, a couple of small video clips of some of the jobs I've been doing. Uh, uh, one of these jobs is uh, an, an industrial side cutter designed to cut uh, seedlings into 5 inch cubes for transplantation to another location and uh, involved a fair bit of MIG welding. Uh, I think we're into it for about 54 pounds of MIG wire. And, uh, turned out to be about a 1600 pound tool to go on the end of an excavator. I'll uh, put in a small video, uh, a few pictures of this project for you. So I started a new project here this morning, so I went up uh, to the steel supplier yesterday and picked up a small amount of sheet metal that I had sheared. And this is going to be, uh, well, well, what would we call this? A sod cutting tool for an excavator, and it's essentially going to be a grid of uh, five inch squares that we're going to mount on the end of the excavator and we're going to use it to cut out cubes out of uh, sod material for transplant for transplanting in a different location. Uh, it's overall is going to measure 75 inches by 43 uh, all divided up into five inch cubes and we're going to uh, attach it to the with a quick attach to the end of an excavator arm. So we got about 1400 pounds of steel to uh, to prep them well together. Uh, all the cutting edges of this will be milled so we get a reasonably sharp cutting tip on it and uh, we have 104 pieces to do like that both sides so we set up a little jig in the mill and get to cutting. We also had a, an older case backhoe in uh, lately to do pins and bushings up in the uh, dipper for the bucket pivot. Uh, again, we got some more pictures, a uh, small bit of video.
came across a unique uh, snowmobile shock that I hadn't encountered before with an internal snap ring and I didn't have a way to uh, to compress the uh, the end cap to get this snap ring out so I designed and made a little tool uh, to be able to take this shock apart and do a rebuild on it so we have a few pictures of that there as well. So while I've got the camera out, this is a good time to address some uh, concerns I guess fellas had with uh, my cutting oil. I had, prior to this, had some Solflow light cutting oil. It's marked as hand tapping, worked fine on the machine. So I'm strolling through Princess Auto and I see a gallon of this uh, Solflow, so I grab it anyway, and it's dark. It looks like used motor oil, yeah, there's no doubt about it. But just in case anybody's wondering, that's what it is. So who says RV work and uh, machine shop work don't go together? I was on a road call uh, a few days back there and uh, so I get another call and I said well I'll, I'll stop at his house on the way home from the first call and uh, have a look at his hot water tank. So we get our job done and just before I'm ready to leave he, uh, he says oh, hold on a second he said and he goes in his house and he brings me out a set of parallels. That, uh, Turns out he used to be a machinist and uh, he had made these during his apprenticeship uh, some years ago. And uh, so of course I grab a mic and I, and I have a look at them. They, uh, they come out to an inch and an eighth and uh, you know from what I can tell here they're within two tenths pretty much anywhere you measure them. They look very nice. Uh, I said, and they're, they're quite old, he's had them for quite some time. And uh, so I guess I'll add these to the toolbox and uh, they've got a really nice home now Steve I'll certainly look after these and I, uh, I appreciate the gift thank you very much. I recently got a phone call from a gentleman down in uh, Kansas City uh, he had called me uh, about the smart car video and uh, asked me about using brake cleaner before welding and of course uh, I had to go back and watch the video to see uh, what he was talking about and uh, sure enough near the end of the video you do see a can of brake cleaner on the welding bench and uh, just to let him know and everybody know I guess that I am aware of phosgene and, uh, and uh, in that particular case uh, the brake cleaner was just used to clean oils and uh, from the metal before painting so it's uh, is something everybody should be aware of to, to not use brake cleaner before you do any welding work on, uh, on metal products because uh, it can be fatal. So I wound up uh, with a bit of free time lately so I got to make myself up a uh, new mill stop in the new design. So I guess we'll retire the old guy there. Uh, it was okay for an experiment earlier on but I like the new one much much better. If anybody's interested uh, they can have this old one, uh, pay for shipping, and I'll send it off to whoever wants it, I guess. Here's a good one for you. We have a distinct lack of uh, battery charging and 12 volts, so we go hunting for the power supply. <laughs> and that's where it is. Just wonderful. So, let's see if we can do a voltage check on this thing here. I doubt if this is possible. One, one arm and the camera, but we'll see. So we get into there and into there, and we've got 7.6 volts, so our connection to our battery is good. 
We have one pin coming in the other side, so our power supply is toasted. Should be fun. Let's pull it out and see. Alright, so we get it out. A little 30 amp supply. It's got power. It's got battery connection. But it has no output. And uh, I don't see any polarity reversal protection fuses on this unit, so I suspect it's another customer that thought black was ground instead of white. And we have a fried power supply, so let's check into it. So a little post-mortem reveals some capacitors that are most definitely swelled. And we, uh, if you look right at the base of this one here, you'll see a nice arc burn down there. So, something got in trouble here at one point or another, so we'll get them a new power supply. So I have a couple things in mind for upcoming projects. Uh, I haven't forgotten about the uh, taper attachment for the king lathe. I still have this piece of steel bar, and uh, eventually when I get a plan together, it's going to come in. Uh, it's come, going to come in as a project. So I got an idea from uh, Randy Richards' video a little while back about the uh, precision level. I mean, uh, he put me onto these uh, ground steric vials, and I think uh, they, they would make a good project to build your own precision level. Uh, and to that effect, I found a piece of cast iron from uh, a hundred-year-old piano that has the potential to be machined out and build your own level from it. So. When I get the parts in for that, I'm going to start a video project on that. So what else we got here? Oh well, yeah, Stan over at Barzy Industrial. Thanks for all the emails, my buddy. I owe you big time. <laughs> and well, since this is December 24th, uh, I'd like to wish everybody out there happy holidays and uh, everybody stay safe. Uh, no doubt we'll have more videos coming in a new year. Thanks for watching.